All right, welcome back to the extended version of the 5x5 tutorial, and in this segment we're going to be learning how to solve the white center block. This is going to be the first center block we solve, and you can choose to begin on any color you want. Uh, it might be a little bit difficult to follow along if you don't begin on white, and white is the most requested color that I've had in all the comments of my previous videos, so that's why I'm beginning with the white color. Um, but if you prefer to begin on green or blue or orange or whatever, uh, that's fine by me. Just make sure you understand where these colors stand in regards to all the other ones on the cube and so that you can follow along easily with the rest of us. All right, so now the cube looks decently messed up and we can begin solving the center block. Now, as you've probably already noticed, each block is consistent of nine little squares. We've got three across and three down. So what that means is we've got nine little white squares scrambled all around this cube. And all these white blocks are gonna end up surrounding the white center, which as I've said, is immovable relative to the red and the green and the yellow, etc. Now, one thing that I did forget to mention in the previous video Video actually is the fact that there are three different piece types. There's the center piece type, which has a single color and has nothing else connected to it. There's the edge piece, which has two different colors. So notice that this piece only has blue, whereas this edge piece has a blue and a yellow color to it. And then there are corner pieces, which have three colors, red, green, and white. And it's important to note that what we're looking for to construct this square are going to be the center pieces. So the small little pieces that have one single color on them. So for example, this right here doesn't count because it's connected to a red. It's actually an edge piece. And this doesn't count because it's connected to red and blue. So it's a corner piece. However, this piece right here isn't connected to anything. It's just by itself floating around. So it's a white center piece that we're going to be looking to construct this three by three square. Now, the way we construct this 3x3 three three square is a little bit different than what we did for the 4x4. Four four. In the 4x4, four four, what we did was we connected little squares into lines, and then we connected two lines together to build our 2x2 two two square. On the 5x5, five five, the actual square is a lot bigger. It's 3x3, three three, and so there are some complications that come into building it. So what we do, instead of building a line of two and a line of two and connecting them into a 2x2, two two, we're actually going to build four different pieces. We're going to build a line of two, a line of two, a line of two, and a line of three. And as you can see, those four components, the two, 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 and three, are gonna connect together into this three by three square. So let me show you what I mean. First of all, as we can see, in my case, I've already got one line here, or maybe one line here, whichever one I choose to use. So what you'll notice is that these squares in and of themselves have different types of pieces. They have the center piece, which is connected to all the others. They have the sort of edge piece, of which there are four on the edges of this face. And then they have the corner pieces, which are over here on the corners of this face. And so the distinction is essentially these corner pieces are connected to the outer rim of each face by two connections, as you can see here. And the edge piece is connected only by one connection. So if you sort of imagine that this rim doesn't exist and this is the only thing that you can see, it actually looks kind of like a three by three face where you've got the center piece, which is here. You've got the edge pieces, which are right here and you've got the corner pieces, which are right here, right? And so at any given point in the cube, you can see, for example, that this is a corner piece. I, I can never do any, any sort of movement that will end this up in the center or end this up on the edge. So this is distinctly a corner cubey of the entire big cube, right? So if I wanna build another line right here, I wanna connect a corner and an edge. So let me find a corner piece, which I've already found here, and put my finger on it, right? And now let me look around the rest of the cube, and here we have an edge piece, right? So what we want to do now is we want to take this corner and connect it to this edge such that we have a line either here or here, right? Because we want to build either this line or this line. So one on the left or one on the right of this line that we already have in existence. So let's take this corner and let's take this edge. And what we can see is by simple movement of rotating this layer right here, we can actually connect these two pieces together. So you can sort of visualize where this is and you can visualize where this is and you can connect them together. Now say for instance, this corner was like this. It was in the top right of its square, and this is on the left. What happens when we try to connect them is this ends up on the top right, and this is still on the left, and they're not connected. That's not what we're looking for. We want to build an actual line. So if this, for instance, is on the top right, then we want this one, this little white square, to be right here. And if we want to do that, we can just turn the entire face like this, all right? And then this is on the right, and this is on the top right, and we can move them together and have a nice little line collect connection. Let me show you another example. Uh, say for instance, this, this piece right here, we have it on the left, and this piece we have it on the bottom, right? So what happens is when we bring it down, they're not gonna connect, obviously, because this is on the left and this is on the bottom, this is on the left, this is on the bottom, it's just not gonna work out. So what we need to do is we need to either move this in such a way that it will be able to connect to this, 
when we move it down, or we need to move this in such a way that it will connect with this when we move this down. And so what you'll notice is if you try something like, for instance, this is on the left, and you want to put this, say, on the top left, right, this seems like it will work. This is on the top left, this is on the left, this can sort of connect into this, but if you try to bring it down, you're essentially going to push the edge down, and that's not going to work, right? So in order to connect these, it looks like we're going to have to bring this to the bottom, and bring this to either the bottom left or the bottom right. So let's do, say, the bottom left, right? And just connect them, and we've got a line. So that's the basics of constructing these sort of lines. And if you want to build a 3 by one line, which is what we're going to get to in the end, what you'll do is you'll find another corner that'll fit in here, say, for example, that corner right there. And since this is on the bottom and this is on the bottom right, we can essentially lift this up and connect to make a line of 3 by one So that's the basics of building lines. Now let's get back to the task at hand, which is constructing this square. So we already have this 2 by one line, and we need to build two more 2 by one lines to stick into here without breaking this 2 by one line. So make sure that when you make your connections, like I did down here, that you're not actually breaking this. Uh, let me show you what I mean. All right, so imagine I have a case like this, where I have this in the top right corner, and I have this on the right side. If I want to go ahead and connect them, right, which I would normally do like this, what that would do is break the line I previously had. So notice that we have this line that we want to keep intact, and if we go ahead and try to connect these like so, what that's going to do is that's actually going to break this line right here. So you want to make sure that if you go to connect these, for example, you get this thing out of the way. You don't want to put it in harm's way and break it up like this. You want to, for example, turn it away, and then you'll be able to move this top face however you want and be able to connect these two together. So keep that in mind when you're building these lines, that you don't want to break up the previous lines that you've built. And that's going to come into play when we go on to the other centerpieces, because whenever we build the other centerpieces, we don't want to break the previous ones that we made, right? All right, so we've got our line right here, right? The one that we begin with, and now we've got this new line. And say we want to connect them, right? So the way we connect them is the same way we connected the little pieces together. We just connect two lines together. So I can put this horizontally like this, for example, right? So this is in the middle and going to the right. So I'll need the other one to be going on the bottom and going to the right. So let's go back to our line here. Let's, let's give it a turn so that it's on the bottom pointing to the right, just like we want it and the other one is over here in the middle, right? Perfect. And then we'll just connect them. So we'll just spin the bottom piece of the cube, and they'll be connected. So we've built our first two lines, and we've also connected them. So now let's build the third line using this edge piece right here. Let's sort of get it out of the way so it's not confusing. Um, and let's ignore that edge piece for now. So we have this lonely little edge piece, and we need a corner for it. So there are two corners over here just hanging out. We can use either one we want. So what will happen when we bring this down is we'll actually bring, break up this 2x2 two two square. And so we don't want to do that, right? So let's move that 2x2 two two square out of harm's way like this. And then we can move this freely without breaking the 2x2 two two square. So when, when, we, when we're allowed to move this freely, we can just bring it down, connect these two pieces together. And now we have this little line that we were looking for. Perfect. And now... If we want to connect this line back into where we want it to be, we can just turn this back to how it was, right? And we have this 2x2 two two square, we have this gap that needs a line, and we have this line that needs placing, so we just lift it up, and we're connected. And now we've made our 2x3 square out of our 3x3 three three square. The final piece is constructing the line, okay? And in this case, we need to use one, two corner pieces, and the one final edge piece that is right here, and put them together um, into any 3x1 line without breaking the previous 2x3 block that we built. So here we can see, for me, this is very easy. You can just bring this down, and you have your 2x1 square without breaking this. That's fine. Let's find the other corner piece. Okay, so the other corner piece is right here. So our blank spot is in the top right of this square. So we want to move this into the top right of its square. And now you can see with one movement, we can actually just bring it down and connect it. And you want to make sure that you don't break this. So say, for instance, we had some sort of conflict where I had to take this and move it, I don't know, down like this, for example. We don't want to do that because we don't want to break up this 2 by 3 square. So make sure that on your cube, which is obviously going to look different to mine, when you're making this final connection of making this 3 by one line, you're not actually breaking your 2 by 3 square. And you can move your 2 by 3 square in any way you want. You can move this face around without affecting anything and uh, give it a free range of movement. So, for example, if you wanted to move this along this axis, you can just turn this 2 by 3 square in such a way that this 
entire edge piece is freed up, right? So you wouldn't want to be turning this away when the 2x3 is in this position because you'll be breaking the 2x3. But if you move the 2x3 away, then you can move this away with no harm done. In our case, however, it doesn't matter. So all we do is we just connect this and we've got our 3x1 and we've got our 2x3. And here it becomes extremely easy. We've got our line of 3 here, we've got our thing here, and we notice that obviously this isn't going to work because these clash, that, that's not right. So this is on the right side, so we want these two to be on the left side, and we can just build that connection. So hopefully that makes sense. I know I went into a lot of detail, and that's why this is the extended version, so that you guys get all the specifics of how to actually build these faces. So hopefully that makes sense. If something is still confusing, feel free to rewind or leave me a comment, and I'll be sure to try and respond to you. But now it's time to move on to building the second square, which is gonna be this yellow piece right here.